Hey guys, it's Nerissa Nicole back with another boxed cake mix hack video. And you guys, this one has to be one of my favorites out of all of the box cake mix hacks I've posted on my channel. This one is so good. I'm going to share with you a red velvet box cake mix hack. Very fancy. And it's going to give you the tanginess and that chocolate flavor that is key to a good red velvet cake all from a box and it could not be easier. So stay tuned. guys so we're going to start off using a duncan Hines perfectly moist red velvet cake mix and these are the directions on the back we're going to make some substitutions and we're also going to make some additions and we're also going to bake this at a lower temperature so i'm going to add the cake mix to a bowl and you can use a stand mixer or a hand mixer you can even just use a whisk and the first addition is going to be two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Don't add any more, just stick to two tablespoons. We don't want it too chocolatey. And then we're gonna substitute the amount of oil that the recipe calls for with double that amount of melted butter. So the recipe calls for half a cup of oil and I'm gonna substitute one cup of melted butter. So I melted it in the microwave until it was about half melted and then just stirred it until the rest of it melted within itself. And we don't want to scramble the eggs that we're going to add in a little bit. So we don't want the butter to be too hot, but we want it to be melted. So the next step is going to be to add our liquid and we're going to substitute the water for buttermilk. Now, if you're anything like me, you don't have buttermilk on hand, but that's okay. We can make our own. So we're going to add one tablespoon of vinegar to one cup of milk and let it sit for a little bit. And voila, we will have buttermilk. Next, we're gonna add our eggs, and I didn't have any in the house, so we have to go collect some. Perfect, four eggs. Hi, Goldie. Are you laying on any eggs? I'm assuming you are. In this box cake hack, we're gonna add one extra egg, so we're gonna add four eggs to our cake mix, and this is gonna enrich the flavor and enrich the texture. We're also going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract and one tablespoon of gel food coloring. We want this to be a very red, red velvet cake. So we're gonna add the eggs, four eggs, one at a time until they're just combined. And then we're gonna mix on low for two minutes. Then scrape the sides of the bowl so you don't miss any of the cake mix. You can see there's a bunch on the edges. So scrape the bowl, get everything combined, and then mix it on medium for two minutes. While you're getting everything mixed up, go ahead and preheat the oven to 335 degrees. Baking at a lower temperature for longer helps the cake bake more evenly. And then these Wilton Bake Even Cake Strips that I'm using also help with that. So I'll link those down below if you don't have any. They really work. So I'm going to use some parchment paper to line the bottom of my pans. And I'm using 9-inch pans here. You can use any any pans that you have. And I'm gonna spray the nonstick cake pan and then I'm gonna put a piece of parchment paper down and then I'm gonna spray the parchment paper. I'm always so paranoid that something's gonna stick and there's nothing worse than putting all of this time and love into making a cake and then it sticks to the pan. So I always just take every precaution. Now it's time to add our batter to our pans and I'm just using a one cup measuring cup to distribute the batter evenly into each of the pans. And then I'm gonna use a spatula to smooth out the batter and the pans. And I was curious to see how well I did, how evenly I got the batter distributed between the two pans. So I measured them on my food scale and I was within four grams. So I was pretty happy with that. So I baked these cakes in a 335 degree oven. Actually, one of them I baked for 40 minutes and one of them I baked for 35 minutes. And I used the toothpick test to make sure they were done. Now, a pro tip that I have gotten from some of my uh, subscriber friends that have commented on some of my videos, we are going to cover our cakes after they have cooled just a little bit, but while they are still warm with some saran wrap and foil, and then we're gonna freeze them. This will help lock in the moisture of the cake, and it's going to be so moist. You're gonna be so surprised at how well this works. Now, freezing your cake not only locks in the moisture, but it also makes for the easiest frosting ever. It's not gonna be crumbly, it's gonna be sturdy, and it's definitely not gonna still be warm. So definitely try this. Let me know down in the comments below how much easier it was to frost your cake with a frozen cake. All right, so now I'm just going to frost the cake and I use different tools. I have some of these scrapers that I just showed you, um, some 
spatulas. I also even use a bench scraper that I've had in my um, junk drawer forever. You know, that works really well. So the frosting I'm using is just a store-bought frosting that I hacked and stay tuned because I'll be posting a store-bought frosting hack for my next video if you want to see what frosting I used for this cake. It was really simple and really, really good. So I just added some of the frosting in between the layers and then added some to the top. Now I am not a professional cake decorator. I'm just a hobby baker and like to share some of the hacks that I have found. So bear with me here. I'm just putting some of the frosting on the outside of the cake, not in a beautiful or like professional manner. I'm just kind of slapping it on there because I want to create like an ombre sort of tie dye looking um, red velvet cake. So I want to use like a red color, a pink color and a white color and blend them all in. So to the white frosting that I have left, I did reserve some to the side, but to the re rest of the frosting in the bowl, I put it back on the mixer and added some red food coloring, the gel, gel food coloring, and went ahead and frosted the bottom and middle portion of the cake. And as you can see, I'm just slapping it on there because I'll clean up the cake table later and I'll link that cake table down below too if you don't have one this one's really good because it it's a turn table and it's also a cake stand all in one but I'm just filling in some of the white and adding the pink and using the different tools to make it as smooth as I can and then once I get the bottom layer and middle layer of the cake covered in the pink frosting I'm going to put the bowl back on the mixer and add more red gel food coloring to make it an even deeper red. Now this time I'm gonna go ahead and add it into a plastic bag and use the plastic bag as a little like piping tool, cut the tip off because uh, I only needed just a little bit on the very bottom layer and that would allow me a little more control. And then I'm using this bench scraper you can see to smooth out the outside of the cake and then just using a paper towel to wipe up the edges where I was a little sloppy. Now, since it's a red velvet cake, I just felt like I had to add more red frosting. So I added some to the top and moved it around on the white to make it look like it's marbled or tie dyed or whatnot. But I thought it turned out great. I was really happy with it. I, again, cannot recommend more freezing your cake before you frost it. So my red velvet cake is done. You guys, this is the best, most rich, best texture, tangy red velvet cake that you will ever eat. It was so, so good. And no one will ever guess that you started with the box cake mix and that you didn't spend hours making this cake. Isn't it gorgeous? Ugh, I need an excuse soon to make this again. So there you have it, a super quick and simple way to level up your red velvet box cake mix. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming store-bought frosting hack video where I share the frosting that I used on this cake as well as some other frostings. Here are a couple videos to watch next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.